This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. The Warwick Paradise Island is expected to add another high-end option for tourists on Paradise Island, and resort officials are anticipating its pending opening. Cleopatra Murphy has details on the property purchased by the Warwick Group that owns renowned resorts in major cities including Paris, Milan, and New York. Renovations at the former Paradise Island Harbor Resort are progressing steadily as the hotel that will reopen as the Warwick Paradise Island prepares for a tentative January 2016 opening. Minister of State for Investments, the Honorable Kalis Roll, toured the property that has been gutted and undergone renovations with an investment at a cost of $18 million and climbing. Hotel manager Lorenzo Simonet says work has been completed on all 245 rooms and all the public areas and the pool deck will be remodeled. This hotel has been, has been here for a while uh, and I think it, it is the first time that uh, since uh, the opening of this hotel years ago that we have had a company uh, devoted that came in and actually what I would consider gutted the entire hotel uh, and is from all the piping, all the electrical work, everything is, is, has been done. It's a, it's, it's, it's a massive renovation. Landscaping will also be carried out on the all-inclusive resort. It is expected to employ 100-plus Bahamians. General Manager Mark Hawkin says the resort intends to improve the all-inclusive model. One of the things that we intend on doing here is taking what's worked and what has evolved and creating an environment that is uh, warm and friendly, interactive, taking advantage of all the beautiful sights right here on Paradise Island, um, putting a Bahamian flair on it, making sure that we're getting our guests out to the out islands, making sure they see more than just Nassau. State Minister for Investments, the Honorable Kalis Roll, anticipates the resort will fill a void that has been missing in the country. We're very excited about the opportunity that this resort is going to present for the Bahamas in this particular space, uh, which is a four-star resort and that has been one of the um, opportunities that has never been filled um, adequately in the Bahamas. Roll said he was also impressed the developers afforded employees training at the company's international properties. Merrill Russell was stationed at one of Warwick's U.S. resorts. It's the motivation in itself and giving us the opportunity to come back again and experience and showcase what we have learned over in the U.S. Resort officials say the overseas training for its staff will be an ongoing process. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. All right, Cleo, thanks a lot. The Public Service Commission hopes to attract well-qualified people into the public service, and this decision is said to be essential as the government's mandate is to serve the entire Bahamas in broad areas of national development. That's our focus tonight. As Betty Thompson Moss tells us about the quality of those employees the service wants to hire. The Public Service Commission operates in a centralized area with a number of staff whose role it is to focus on specific aspects of the government and the functioning of the commission. As Chairman Father James Moultrie oversees the operation along with his team, we sat down with him to determine exactly what kind of employees they are hoping to attract. We want the best, we want the brightest, we want honest people, reliable people, people who do their best on a daily basis. Now those individuals, according to the chairman of the commission, have no problem in the service when it comes to appointments and promotion, and they can move right to the top. If the best and brightest come into the public service, they can move to the post of permanent secretary. The post of permanent secretary is comparable to any CEO in the private sector. But as it stands, a number of permanent secretaries in the public service are approaching the retirement age, and others must be selected to carry out those roles. Those who are in the middle must now be prepared to move up to fill those slots. That is, is a challenge, because I, I believe it is fair to say that we have not done the best job that we could do in preparing the middle to move in. But we are getting better candidates every year in the public service. They're coming in with degrees that we didn't have before. 
and many of them have master's degrees and PhDs. While the public service is now attracting well-qualified group of individuals, Father Moultrie says the bulk of the employees in government still operate at the lower end and they too have the opportunity for advancement. I've seen people who come in as a janitress, go back to school and study, and now they are clerical people with good positions, managers and all. So if you are prepared, although you come in as a temp, and you are prepared to qualify yourself to make the sacrifice and to work hard, the sky is the limit for you. But to help in this advancement in the public service and to reduce delays, new initiatives are needed and studies are being conducted. Now, to what level would that change possibly take the government service? We'll explore that question in our next segment. Betty Thompson Moss, ZNS Network News. Recent Queens College graduate, 17 year old Dominic McDonald, is the 2015 All Bahamas Merit Scholarship winner. The $150,000 prize will assist the aspiring United Nations diplomat with his studies at Texas A&M University College Station. Runner-up was yet another QC student, former head girl Cass Adderley. She says getting beat out of the top prize by her very close friend eased any disappointment she had. I'm really grateful because um, it just it, it's enabling me to uh, achieve my dreams and my goals that I had um, set for myself. And I'm also really humbled um, in the presence of so many other awardees as well who also did extremely well in their um, academics. It is mind-blowing. Like, I didn't expect to get such a prestigious award, and I'm glad to be able to witness this, especially with Dominic winning the award, being one of my best friends. I'm glad to at least have come second to that, because he is phenomenal. Phenomenal is not the word for QC. They took home 10 awards in total, the most of any school. They were followed by St. Augustine's College, Kingsway Academy, St. Andrew's School, C.L. Walker Senior High School, Grand Bahamas Bishop Michael Eldon High School, Forest Academy in Abaco, and then Central Eleuthera High School. Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, noted that despite tough economic times and budgetary constraints, this year marks the most scholarships given out since the program's inception in 1993. This year, the caliber of merit scholars is really unprecedented, as was stated by Mr. Saunders. Because of this, we have awarded 21 recipients, which is the most we have ever awarded. Collectively, this group has taken more than 250 BGCSE examinations, averaging 10 exams per student. Five of them have received 10 or more A's and four of them have received a phenomenal SAT score of 2,000 or higher. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Cleopatra Murphy. The Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation will partner with the National Development Plan Secretariat to hold consultations on 15 different islands. Public engagement activities include focus group meetings with local governments, community leaders and members of the business community, and wider public consultations during community meetings. Family Island visits, which began on Andras on July 20th, will continue throughout mid-September, ending in Acklands. Bank of the Bahamas will close its Thompson Boulevard branch on August 31st. Its operations will be transferred to the Tonique Williams Darling Highway branch and officials confirm that no jobs will be lost. BOB's management maintains the process is anticipated to be seamless as the closure of the Thompson Boulevard branch and redeployment of staff is a part of the bank's overall strategy to rationalize its network. BOB's Thompson Boulevard automatic teller machine will remain open. And in international business news, the Greek economy grew by 0.8% in the second quarter of the year. The official figures also revised a reading of 0.2% negative growth in the first quarter to a flat reading showing no change in economic activity. This has been your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Cleopatra Murphy.
As the summer winds down, summer camps throughout the capital are also wrapping up. And as Clint Watson tells us tonight, the nation's leader visited a very special camp that focuses on some, soon, some unique skills. Their guests through playing instruments, <laughs> singing, <laughs> dancing, <laughs> and even acting. A clear indication that Bahamian youth are some of the most talented people in the region. It serves to reinforce what Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie already knows and has decided to give considerable attention to nurturing. His visit to the Z-Bandit camp closing ceremony at Stephen Dillett Primary School affirmed a message he continues to preach. It is possible for you to be what you want to be. Something very special, very grand, and becoming major contributors to your country. But it is a possibility, and you have to believe that it can happen. Not able to resist the temptation to join his Attorney General, Senator Allison Mayor Gibson, and head of the camp Eugene Cawley in the festivities, Mr. Christie moved to the beat with the youth in celebration of their summer success. Organizer Cawley indeed grateful to sponsors like Ida Locke, who during the 10th annual camp continues to demonstrate the gift of giving. We couldn't help make it this far without Ida Locke. Because they support this community, the children. They're very committed to um, supporting the children. Mr. Ba Z Bandit is honestly, we do appreciate the program that you put on every summer. And like I told you, next year, Alan Luck want to be more active in the program. The camp focused on trade skills, campers built lamps, and made jewelry. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Have you ever visited Long Key? If you haven't, get a look tonight as a true gem of the Bahamas that's just a handful of people can call home. Kishla Adli takes us there tonight in BTC's Family Island Connection. Never mind separating the sheep from the goats. Here in Long Key, the goats and chickens live as one. They perhaps mimic the population, all of 25 people. There's lots of time to shoot the breeze and bond. This is the view heading into Long Key. Awesome is an understatement. Remote though it may be, it's not lacking in technology for the 12 BTC consumers. I asked BTC senior manager Ian Knowles if the numbers made good business sense. No, unless you're already mine. Because when you look at, for instance, when you have less than 20 people here, and the type of service that we have here compared to anywhere else in the Bahamas, there's no return on your investment. Mm -hmm. But, but as, a, as a government and now a private company, we want to provide universal service throughout the country. It's this avid boater's lifeline on the water, and we proved that when we took a trip with him. It, it fallen, it fallen, it fallen. Yeah, fallen. Yeah. But that's that's important for you, right? On the water. That's very important. I gotta have it. You know. Yeah. So we can turn back and yeah. Get your phone. Yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta have that. You yeah. know. Without that, I can't make it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> International trips are a big part of his itinerary, and a phone is a major addition to communication capabilities, especially in an emergency. Some people be uh, like in danger, you know, without my phone, I mean, I wouldn't know what to do, you know what I mean? I got the VHF one, but I mean, sometimes they call me my phone, you know what I mean, because my phone is like international. You know, people call me and say, hey, Ravi, you know, you say that, 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 they want me to do this. Can you do that? Can you do that? You know what I mean? Because that's my connection with the world. Yeah. My phone, you know what I mean? Okay. VHF is only 30 miles out, you know what I mean? But my phone is like worldwide. Okay. Okay. So my phone is very important. I, I got to have it. More telecommunications upgrades are on the way. They'll soon have 3G and 4G service in Long Key. And they're looking forward so very soon that we could give them IBTV like anywhere else in the Bahamas. You know, they want to watch you as well in Long Key. But despite what new distractions may be made available, it's unlikely this close-knit bunch will disconnect from each other. 
Keishla Adderley for the BTC Island Connection.